Florida State just landed a big commitment in cornerback Ricky Knight. Tell me more about this kid, A.B. Yeah, so Ricky, this is a guy we looked at, geez, probably in February. Uh, you, Brendan, and I talked about him. He was a prospect that uh, blew up kind of late, was getting a bunch of offers after some camps and I want to say it was January or February. Um, had none. Yeah. Florida State was one of his first offers. So he's a four-star composite, a three-star with 24-7 sports. Um, he's out of Cardinal Newman High School in West Palm Beach. The Knowles went head-to-head with Miami, and I'm not going to say that they whooped them, but they whooped them and got Ricky Knight the third in his class. This is a big-time get. Um, I've been a personal fan of his. You see who they kind of competed against, Illinois, Miami, uh, Iowa on there. So some known defensive schools, um, Illinois just had a had a player go in the top 10 in the draft. It was a corner. So it's interesting. I think there's some schools that can identify uh, versatile D-backs, get them on the field, get them developed, and turn them into good players. And I, I ultimately think Ricky's going to be a pretty good player. Um, I believe Florida State is looking at him as a nickel. Uh, which I think when we watch this tape will make a little bit of sense. Yeah, so um, I've got the tape pulled up here. It'll be interesting to see if they move to to kind of having a full-time nickel. It feels like they've kind of just been placing people there. I guess Kevin Knowles has kind of always been a nickel. Yeah, but... he's been there. There's been talk about him playing outside, but I think that they've realized his home is on the inside. So his ball skills, his tracking – um, he does it as good as anybody. He had a bunch of interceptions last season. Yeah, this he, is he's, re- he's reading this really well. Yeah, they're in cover three here, so it's kind of odd. You don't see this terribly often where a cover three corner kind of steals from the post. So he's supposed to be kind of outside this hash over here. Um, but he sees this coming across the middle, and he, and he undercuts it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it might have been so, a, a scouting thing they saw or, or something to keep. keep it looks to me like he's just reading the quarterback and kind of understanding where the ball's going and just jumps it. Um, I think he's got I think he's got really good eyes. I think he understands. Here's something here. I've seen some talk on the message boards about uh, his toughness. I think he's more than willing to tackle the football. I, that doesn't that doesn't worry me in the slightest. Um, I don't see a lot of stuff on his huddle here that suggests. Like that's, I'm not going to say his technique there was great. He's going to need to clean that up. But again, he's more than willing to put his head down and get in there. Uh, like I said, they're going to need to clean that technique up a little bit. He can't be putting his head down on tackle, but knocks the ball loose. Yeah, I think that's kind of that fits the the nickel mold of what you're talking mm-hmm. about. You don't necessarily need him to be the, you know, elitist of athletes, but you need right. him to move well in space, not be afraid to to hit somebody, and and be able to read the field well. Yeah, he uh, his, his speed is questionable. Uh, but you see him here turn, flipping his hips and getting down the field. I think they play in a pretty low classification in Florida. I don't know all the classifications down there, so I'm not going to pretend to be an expert. But I believe I've seen that somewhere that they play in a lower classification. Um, but I think his speed's okay. It's not elite. Um, but I, I think that that's ultimately why you are going to talk about him sliding inside. Again, another another example of him being physical. That's something they've lacked against the run game, um, and something I think that would be very useful if they could get him in there in that nickel <laughs> spot. That's what got him the offer. Ultimately, was <laughs> blocking the crap out of somebody. Yeah, just <laughs> knocking someone to the ground. Uh, I'll take it. Yeah, I, I think, and I think you could potentially see him kind of occupying a you know a Jamie Robinson type mm-hmm. role where he doesn't need that top end speed or size. Yeah, he's willing to just kind of get in the mix and and make some tackles in space. Yeah, I mean, would it shock you if he played if he played all five positions in the secondary? I mean, it wouldn't me. I think he's one of those dudes that you can just find a spot for him, and he's going to get it. Yeah, I think to go to your point, like it, it makes total sense to me that an Iowa or an Illinois would be looking at this kid as, you know, someone that you know might not. You know, he's not six foot two. He's not going to run a four four, but mm-hmm. he's someone that you can use to build a versatile defense with. Just like we we're talking about with with skill players before, you either want a guy that like is an absolute beast at one thing, 
or these guys that can be well-rounded to be put anywhere on the field. If you're looking for matchups, yeah. this guy's a guy that can kind of help soak up matchups to let the other guys succeed. Yeah. And, and this staff loves guys that play both ways. You're getting a look at his, his offensive film here. Well, this is why Mike, this is why Mike <laughs> wants him. Slot fade, baby. A little slot fade. Anyway, this is the type of kid that traditionally has left Florida going to an Illinois or an Iowa and turned into a, all Big Ten top three round draft pick. I, I think this is a good take. I think he's a, I think he's a really high floor. I'm not sure his ceiling is as high, but I think the floor is super high. Um, versatile defensive back that you get in your room, and you're going to be able to count on him day in and day out, and that's valuable. Yeah, I, I'm with you here. So let's let's kind of end it up on this last play where he's kind of playing H back here, catching a yeah. little slip. Moves really well in space. I'm mm-hmm. with you. I think this is a great take. I think he's kind of, like I said, he, he's, he seems like a matchup eater. He's, he's a guy that can kind of help other people be put in positions to succeed because, like you were saying, it looks like he could play any position on the defense, yeah. um, defensive secondary. So yeah. uh, any closing thoughts about Ricky Knight? No, I think I just think Ricky Knight fits the mold. Um, Adam Fuller's often talked about Wanting guys that can do everything, get them just get a defensive back. Don't label them a corner, a nickel, or a safety. Get them in the mix and figure out where you're going to put them. I think he fits that to a T. I agree with your uh, your your Jamie Robinson comment. It j- he just makes a lot of sense for the secondary to get him in here and f- find a home for him. Bring that floor in here. Bring that work ethic in here and, and turn him loose. Agreed.